These apple fritters are made with Japanese rice flour. They come out both light, airy, but also gluten-free. Start by preheating your oven to 375 degrees. To make the apple fritters, start by combining all of the liquid ingredients and the sugar in the mixing bowl. So we're going to add the sour cream, the sugar, eggs, egg yolks, milk, vegetable oil, and vanilla extract. All of that will be mixed on a KitchenAid with a paddle. Mix about medium speed, two to three minutes, just until everything's combined. I like to combine the dry ingredients first on parchment paper. So my dry ingredients includes the rice flour, the nutmeg, salt, baking powder, and xanthan gum. I use my hand whisk or um, you can use a sifter just to kind of aerate to evenly distribute all of the ingredients together. Now I add this in with the parchment paper. The parchment paper also makes it easier to add the ingredients into the mixing bowl. And I'll let that mix on medium speed for about a minute or so. We're going to add in two Granny Smith apples that have been peeled and diced. I add a little bit of lemon juice to the apples just to prevent them from turning brown. Scrape down the sides and bottom of the mixing bowl to ensure the product is thoroughly incorporated. Now we're going to make sure that our oil is heated to 350 degrees. Using a one ounce scoop, carefully drop the batter into the frying oil. If they are fried at a lower temperature, the oil's not hot enough, it's going to give you a very greasy final product. If the oil's too hot, it's gonna take on too much color and the interior will still be raw. We're gonna go ahead and rotate the fritters in the oil just to get a nice even golden brown color. I use my chopsticks just to kind of help keep them moving around in that hot oil. Um, you're also preventing them from sticking together. I probably fry them about five minutes or so. They should take on a really nice deep golden brown color. We're removing the fritters from the oil and I'll use a spider or a slotted spoon. I'm depositing them on a paper towel and just to let them rest and a little bit of the oil to release. Now I'm gonna transfer them onto a parchment lined sheet pan and we're gonna bake them off for about another minute or two. Just to ensure that that rice flour has time to set. I'm just ensuring that it's completely baked all the way through. Once they come out of the oven while they're really warm, I like to toss those in a mixture of granulated sugar and cinnamon. You could do just vanilla sugar. You could do powdered sugar. Obviously these are best served warm delicious with ice cream, vanilla sauce, definitely worth eating while they're nice and warm. These delicious cheesy breads are made with Parmesan cheese and rice flour. Let's start by preheating the oven to 450 degrees. To start making these cheesy breads, we're adding milk, water, oil, and salt and we'll put that in our saucepan. We're going to put that on medium, medium high heat, and we're gonna stir that frequently, bringing that to a simmer, so roughly about a minute or so. So your liquid ingredients have now come to a simmer, the salt has dissolved. You'll remove it from the heat and you'll gradually add in your rice flour. I like to add this in just from the parchment paper. It's just easier for me. I can see where my rice flour is going. We're going to put that on medium, medium high heat. We're going to stir continuously and cook for two minutes. This is going to really start to coagulate. The starches are going to start to gel. You're going to note that there's a film on the bottom of the pan. It actually starts to look somewhat similar to mashed potatoes. You're really just trying to get the excess liquid out of this. You're actually also in essence toasting the rice flour a bit and you're removing excess water. So now we're going to transfer the mixture to the mixing bowl. And we're going to put the paddle attachment on. And now what we're doing is trying to release some steam. We're going to go ahead and do that for about a minute or so. Now we have two eggs off to the side. What I did is I whisked those eggs and I actually add in half at a time. And this just allows for it to incorporate easier for the liquid to absorb. I make sure that the egg is no longer visible. 
And last but not least, we'll add in our Parmesan cheese and mix for an additional 30 seconds. What we're looking for is the cheese to just slowly start to melt a little bit. Now you can add in any cheese, but the Parmesan cheese is a really nice, strong, sharp cheese. We're gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl, everything off of the paddle, and um, we'll go ahead and use a number one scoop, like an, a one ounce scoop, and we'll place balls of batter on the parchment. I like to wet my fingertips and round the buns just so that it has a nice smooth uh, round surface, not that flat bottom from the scoop. So we're going to bake our cheese rolls and they're gonna be baked at 450 degrees to start off with. So what I mean by that is that the oven has been set for 450. I go to the oven, I turn the oven off and I let it sit for five minutes. After that five minutes, your oven has now reached 400 degrees. I turn the oven back on at 400 degrees and bake until thoroughly cooked through. I would say 15, 20 minutes. Also, you can use a thermometer and an internal temperature of 190 to kind of set the dough, if you would. These cheesy buns can be served with cheese, soup, uh, just about anything. They're really quite delicious.